Hi, this is Lisa Van Gammeret, the Gifted Guru, and I want to welcome you to my tutorial on how to create printables in PowerPoint. This is probably the number one thing I get asked about when I'm leading training with teachers, and so I thought I would share with you my tips for how to do it using stuff that's all free that you already have access to. So let's get started. The first thing I do is set up the PowerPoint slide to be ready to design, and I want to make it into a piece of paper that's in portrait orientation. The way that I do that in my operating system is to go to the Design tab. Now this may be slightly different for you depending on what operating system you're using, but what you're looking for is on the Design ribbon typically, and it says Page Setup. Under Page Setup, you'll see this default is on screen show. And I'm going to click that drop down menu, scroll down, and select letter paper. Next, I'm going to select portrait orientation. Notice that it's already building in a slight margin. So with PowerPoint, you don't have to worry as much like you do with Word about the margins being set outside the printable area of the page. You can work to within a pixel or two of the edge of the canvas, and you'll be all right. I like to do one other thing as well. Under View, I like to check this box, Grid Lines. That helps me see that everything is lined up because I can line things up along these grid lines. Now that I've got my PowerPoint canvas ready to go, I need to go find the things I want to use, the elements that I want to use in the printable. The website that I use to find backgrounds, borders, and frames is this one, mycutegraphics.com. I know the name kind of wants to send you into diabetic coma, but I promise they've got great stuff and they're totally free. They're very, very generous with their, um, with their resources. So I'm going to go to the backgrounds and I'm going to scroll down and look at my options. Now these are the different background families that they have. So all these will be backgrounds in pink. All of these will be plaid. This is not the only background that they have that's plaid. These are just the choices. You can also see more of them that are specifically holiday. I'm going to choose a striped background um, in order to not be too cutesy for those of you who that's not your style. Those of you who are, feel free to explore to your heart's content all of the wonderful, really cute backgrounds that they've got. So I'm going to choose this gray and blue striped background. So I click on that and it will take me here. I'm going to right click and then it will say all these options. I'm going to save image as and I've created a folder in my folders just for images and backgrounds. So I'm going to navigate to where I have that in my computer but for you it will be different. It may be a file that you create just for it. It may be that it will go to your downloads, that is totally up to you. If you're not used to doing downloads, you can create a folder on your desktop and then save it to there. So now I have the background I'm going to use. Now I can look at the different frames. Now these are the frames that would go on top as like a label on a front page, for example. And there are four pages of them available here. I'm gonna look for one that's fairly simple and straightforward. So let's say um, these are a few of them. And I don't have to use this frame. I can actually create one in PowerPoint itself using a shape. So if you would rather have one that's more streamlined, you can do that. You can also use the ones here that are a little bit more elaborate. These, um, some of these are, can do an entire page. So. I think that for my purposes today, I'm going to show you two different ways. And let's take, let's see, I had blue and gray. None of these are really grabbing me. So I'm going to go back to the first page. And this is exactly the process that I use. I just go through and look. So I think I'll use this one, just this black and white bracket frame. Although, you know what, those lines, yeah, that's good. Black and white bracket frame. Again, it's just whatever you want. Again, it will take me to it when I click on it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to save image as. 
Now that I've already saved in that file, it's going to take me right back to it, and I just click Save. Now I have a background and a frame in the file ready to go, and I will go back to my PowerPoint. I'm going to click the Design tab again, and once again, this is going to depend on your particular operating system. For mine, which I'm working in PowerPoint 2010 on a laptop, I click on Design Background Styles, Format Background. So there are a lot of steps here that yours may not have. You're trying to get to the background styles and how to format that background. It may be slightly different, but if you have PowerPoint 2007, 2010, and you're working on a laptop, it'll look like this. I'm going to click on Picture or Texture Fill, and I'm going to insert the picture from a file. I'm going to navigate to where I stored those images that I downloaded, and remember, I have created a folder for it. There's my picture I want, my image, and it's very important that you click this box, Tile Picture as Texture. Then I click Close. Now this is the background and you can see these lines, you can take those out later so I could click on view and uncheck those grid lines and you would see what it will really look like. I'm going to leave the grid lines because that helps me line stuff up. Now I'm going to insert a frame to go on top of it by clicking insert picture and choosing that frame that I selected. It will, I double click on that, it inserts into my page and I am going to line it up and see how those grid lines come in handy. I can line it right up with that grid line. Now, I can actually double click on this and select color, and I can change the color of the frame if I want it, if I, if I want it to be different. And I'm actually going to select this one, which makes it a gray outline rather than a black outline because that matches what I'm doing here just a little bit better. It matches that background I selected. So now I'm going to click on Insert, Shape, and I'm going to select just a plain old rectangle. And I'm going to start on the left edge of my um, screen, of my slide, my canvas, and stretch it across the canvas. When I double click on that frame, then it lets me choose how to format it. I have selected under Shape Outline, I selected No Outline. And now under Shape Fill, I'm going to select a light gray to go along with what I have. Then I'm going to right click on that shape, right click, and I'm going to scroll down to where it says Send to Back, and I'm going to click, click Send Backward. That's going to put that shape behind that label I put on the front. Now I'm going to insert text box. And now I'm going to set up a text box inside this shape. And in here, then, I'm going to write in my text box. And when I write in my text box, I'm going to pull it out over here so you can see. I'm going to write in my text box, and I can type anything that I want. So let's say I'm going to have a printable that I'm going to do about, I'm making this up as I create this tutorial, so let's think of something cool. Um, advanced, or let's say um, vocabulary practice for landforms. So let's say I'm doing a unit on landforms, and I'm going to do vocabulary practice for landforms. Now I'm going to actually move this text box up here because this is where I want it. If I select all that text, I can go back and choose what font I want from all the fonts I have on my computer. Now you could choose this before you start typing, but I like to choose it after. And the reason I like to choose it after I've decided how much text I want is because then that gives me a feel for how much space I actually need in here. So I'm going to choose this font, which is called Amaranth, and I'm going to center it. And I can see that I really do still have a little bit more space here. So I'm going to make the font larger. I'll do 48 point font. I'm going to choose a font color. I'm going to go back and do a gray that matches. Or I could do a blue that 
that matches or kind of matches. And it's just up to you how picky you want to get about how close the blue matches. Here I've just chosen um, to double click on the color and I'm choosing a color and now that's a little bit closer. So now I have the label and now I've got the front page of whatever printable I want to do. And I have a couple of options. I can click Control M to create a new slide and I can actually just duplicate um, what I've done by clicking duplicate slide and then taking off these elements and putting in a different element or I can use a whole new slide like I created by clicking control M and now I can just have a blank slide that I can go with and type in my vocabulary practice for landforms and start typing whatever it is I want in my printable if I want the second page of the printable to look more like the first page of the printable, then I have two options. I can insert a shape, and here I've clicked rectangle again, and I'm just going to pull a rectangle out, and again these grid lines really come in handy in helping me make sure it's balanced. I can do this shape, and then I double click on it, shape fill, and I can fill it with white, shape outline and I can fill it with that blue I can make the outline rather not fill but outline of that blue that I had used in the font so now I have what amounts to almost a complete blank page ready to write on with just the border th around it that looks like the front page or I can do what I did with the just a full blank page that's entirely up to you now you can edit text by right clicking and editing text within a shape but I don't like to do that and the reason I don't like to do that is because it starts it in the middle of the shape and I don't I don't really want to do that I want my text being up and so what I do is rather than edit in the shape I just go back and insert a text box into my shape and I can format that text box and I can type within it and do whatever I want. Now once I start writing text, I might decide to go back and uncheck that grid line so that they don't distract me. But if you want to make sure your text boxes are lined up, those grid lines are really super helpful. So that's up to you. If you would like, another option you have, let me show you. I'm going to duplicate that slide once more just by right click, duplicate slide. I've duplicated that slide once more so I could show you one other option. The other option you have is that you can insert one of those full page borders um, that they had that you could use that could then make your whole page a border. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Back on um, mycutegraphics.com under the clip art frames on the third page, I think it was, I started getting into frames that were the whole page. So maybe it was the fourth page. There were frames that were the whole page. And you can do those as well, and then your whole page will be taken up with a frame. You can also use page borders, but often the page borders are just the lines. They don't have a white solid fill. And so if you want to fill in text in the middle of them and you have a background that can be trickier but I'll show you how it works just in case that's what you want to use. All you would do is click on the one you want, save the image as, put it in there. Now I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint, I'll scroll down, I will click on this one that was a blank page, I'll take out this text box so it doesn't distract us, insert picture, and now I have this page border and I can expand it to the edge of my PowerPoint. And as you see then, that shows up in the edge and my text I have shows up inside of it. But it's, it's not full, it's not a color, so it doesn't show that and I can't put it on top of a, um, I can't put it on top of one of these or this will show through and I won't be able to type text. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know in the comments if you'd like another tutorial or other questions that you have. 
Have a great day and have fun with your printables.